Welcome everybody to this new webinar of the Network of Resources webinar series. Uh, today uh, we are here with Hervé Comon uh, talking about the GeoAdza TEP. And uh, I want to remind all participants that this is part of the Network of Resources initiative uh, for training and webinars on the different services and providers that are available through the Network of Resources. I'm Federico Rondoni on behalf of the NOR. And uh, today we'll go through uh, the uh, Geohazard tab. Uh, if you have any questions during the presentation uh, that Hervé will deliver, please uh, feel, free, feel free to write your questions uh, in the chat. We will address them uh, while uh, there is the presentation, or we will have a, a question and, ans and answers uh, session at the end of the presentation. After the question and answer, uh, we will also see how to access uh, the services that Hervé will show us through the network of resources and how to apply for ESA sponsorship. So um, uh, I also want to remind uh, every participant that this session is recorded and will be later available through the NOR portal and also that at the end of the session uh, you will be automatically redirected to a survey that we ask you to uh, fill out uh, in order to let us know um, how uh, it went with the webinar and with the webinar series in general and uh, how we can improve. So uh, without taking uh, any more minutes, uh, I leave the floor to Hervé, please. Thank you very much. All right, so today I'm presenting the overview of the tools and services on the GeoAzard exploitation platform. I am Hervé Comon, Operations Manager at Radue, a company based in, in Rome. Uh, today the agenda is a, a quick uh, overview of the purpose, users and stakeholders, as well as the JEP offering uh, for the part uh, which relates to uh, subscriptions to the processing services on the platform. Then, uh, let's say 15 minutes on uh, reviewing in more detail the platform capabilities. And uh, after which I will uh, go through a few use cases examples for uh, event monitoring tasks. And I will conclude with uh, a listing of the resources to help uh, users start with uh, with JEP. And we, as uh, Frederica said, we, have, we will have a questions and answer session at the end. So Teradue is a SME based in Rome. It was founded in 2006 with the support of the European Space Agency Business Incubation Center. From the start, we are supporting uh, application builders in our sciences to use satellite as observation data. Uh, we deliver cloud platform as a service, along with the application programming interfaces. That's part of our ELIP uh, offer. This is the uh, backbone of all the platforms that we operate. Um, for the transfer and production of scalable software applications. So scalability here applies mainly through the use of uh, ELIP and uh, the platform APIs to uh, algorithms uh, embedded on the platform as services. The business model is platform-centered, uh, platform as a service, software as a service, and we deliver through our systems collaborative workplaces for the value adders uh, working with us to interact and co-create on these platforms. So JEP is one of these, and uh, so the, um, the URL, the website is geowazards depeu and you find a, a homepage with a number of shortcuts to access GeoBrowser applications, the apps, a number of communities which are supporting uh, the management of projects, uh, initiatives, or uh, corporate subscriptions. There is a public forum, there are many tutorials online and some analytics and many other information from the top menu. Um, so from the start, we are working for uh, science users um, and we are um, partnering and supported by science community stakeholders. 
main uh, two ones uh, so far for JEP has been the European Space Agency and the Asian Development Bank, providing funding so that we deliver uh, free of uh, charge user access at the, at the service entry points. We also uh, deliver subscription-based uh, access to direct uh, customers, direct subscribers. And we have a governance board, uh, including the service providers, uh, which are contributing their algorithms uh, on JEP for the use of, uh, by the community. The platform uh, is based on uh, principles of virtualization and federation. We are leveraging cloud compute power. We are experts at Hardware in cloud computing APIs so that we tap into cloud resources from multiple cloud providers. And this is our business to connect uh, systems like JEP to the most relevant uh, cloud computing uh, providers, depending on the context and the funding. And we are accessing uh, Copernicus Sentinel's mission data via uh, federation as well as a number of other uh, data sources, especially we have been partnering with the Community on Earth Observation Satellites Working Group Disasters and the uh, Geohazards and Supersites super Natural Laboratories for accessing a large number of uh, terabytes of EO data archives for ERS and VSAT and other EO missions, more recently uh, high resolution uh, missions like Pleiad. And we are also partnering with the European Plate Observing System, EPOS, uh, providing the, the technical component for satellite data. So on JEP, you will find uh, two main categories of uh, EO data processing capabilities. On demand, where the user is in, is in charge of selecting all the data, the input data and the processing service parameters. And then submit a job and leave the job running in the background and can come back on the portal anytime to find back the, the results or monitor the progress. And systematic processing setups where we program uh, uh, regular uh, fetching of uh, large amounts of EO data, whether it is fully archived data or monitoring new acquisitions to be processed as on the go and uh, delivering regularly through APIs the results towards JEP. Over time, uh, we have been um, running 200,000 processing CPU hours per year on average. All this consumed by our individual users over time. That represents about 5,000 data processing jobs per year. Uh, over time, we have had more than 350 active users representing more than 130 organizations. The subscribers are the active users uh, are connecting projects on the platform with advanced access and they can use data processing services on top of publishing the results and providing feedback to improve the service. Um, when people are not subscribed, uh, we, uh, they have a, visit, a status of visitor and still have access to a lot of uh, functionality on the portal. Uh, we have had more than uh, 3,000 register registered users over time as visitors, and they can search for EO data acquisitions for shared results from uh, processing jobs uh, outputs and public information levels. So when you join, uh, when you join the portal, uh, you have the, the home page with a number of uh, shortcuts and uh, the social media web presence that we, we, we have on, uh, on our blog and on Twitter. And then there is the menu entry workspace. So the workspace provides access to open applications for everyone. So as a visitor, you can access the EPOS application and what we call the global application or the public application, which I will showcase later on. So that's for the, let's say the thematic applications. And you can access open communities, uh, which are made available by default for any newly registered uh, accounts. Uh, currently, we are curating uh, open communities for different thematics in uh, geohazards, volcanic hazards, seismic landslides, and subsidence. And of course, when you are subscribed uh, and part of the project, you will access your private uh, communities or the subscription uh, dedicated communities. 
to subscribe, there is a menu entry called the web store where you have a detail on the on the way to subscribe either at, as a direct purchase or like, or as a sponsored user and later on federico will present to you the, the, the modus operandi for brandy for being uh, uh, is another sponsored user and then we describe the offer so the logic on jet for uh, categorizing the processing services is that we have three services packs basic essentials advanced which correspond uh, to uh, different categories of processing services you have the basic category for data screening basically it's uh, it's about um, uh, visualizing uh, and arranging the spectral bands of uh, EO satellite mission by com combining those bands rasterizing uh, the the INSAR uh, sensor bands, uh, this kind of uh, visualization and data screening. Then we have the essential service pack, uh, which would groups event response services. So they are, uh, <clears throat> in a nutshell, they are um, change detection services. Typically, you, you will input the processing service with a pre-event image and then with a post-event image, and you will get the change detection output. And finally, inside the advanced service pack, we have uh, area monitoring services, especially ground motion monitoring services that will process very long time series, more than uh, two, three, or four, or five years, where you can even, even process the full Sentinel-1 uh, time series um, on JEP using, uh, for example, the service uh, snapping. This includes Insta INSAR services for PSI, so I was mentioning snapping, but also SBAS techniques with the PSBAS service from IREA, and also optical services from our partner in Strasbourg, GDM OPT services. Now, if you request a sponsorship, uh, you will get an equivalent of the advanced service pack. So it means you will get accumulated. Uh, I didn't comment, but you see here there is a progression from basic to essentials. When you subscribe to essentials, you have access also to the data screening services. And this is cumulative. So with Flex, it's an equivalent to advanced or the processing services available. You can select the one that are of interest for you. And uh, you are sponsored by NOR with this uh, specific uh, flex access. So today I will provide more details in this presentation on the new uh, services on JEP. We have now the ground motion time series viewer, and we have also PSI post-processing services tools, post-processing tools for snapping. So let's go in more detail uh, now on this, uh, on this part of the presentation. So when you open an app, I was discussing the entry point for apps, you will get a geo browser application with on the top right uh, contextual menu, where you will switch between uh, catalogs for input data or for results, basically, and also um, pre-generated uh, information layers. On the center of the GeoBrowser application, you have a map, an interactive map with a large number of features to interact with the map. On the left-hand side, you have all the data services which are related to a data context. So depending on the menu you have selected on the top right of the screen, uh, you will get a different list here on the data services uh, panel. And finally, you can open on the right-hand side a processing services tab to select a processor, open it, uh, define the input parameters, start a job, and monitor the list of jobs you have submitted, as well as monitor the public jobs which are shared by other users with you. So the data context, so there is EO data source context where you have a number of uh, catalogs uh, to which the platform is connected for the most uh, uh, useful uh, missions for uh, geohazards monitoring. We have an EO-based products uh, context where we uh, curate uh, information layers of uh, large uh, systematic processing campaigns. 
And we have a community menu with a number of uh, uh, public uh, information layers, the shared jobs, shared products, a demo about terrain motion. And now we are extending this community public uh, access with EGMS related uh, data, the European Ground Motion Service from uh, Copernicus that I will uh, present. But before that, uh, I introduce uh, the JEP tutorials for processing services. Basically, they follow all of them, all the services follow the same logic. So inside the tutorial, you will see first a uh, description how to select the processor, then how to select the uh, EO data files to process, then basically a drag and drop operation from the catalog records matching your uh, search on the map as input to the processor, uh, checking the other parameters, eventually configuring your, uh, your personal settings, but they all have uh, default values and run the job and access the result. As simple as that. Um, the logic uh, of working on JEP, I tried to uh, capture uh, the essentials of what can be a work session. So of course there are variants. So typically you would seek for a dedicated uh, app. Uh, this will provide you access to custom data spaces. From there, you can eventually dynamically load uh, a data offering, uh, which, which can be local to your computer or accessible via our project. Uh, you, you can uh, style uh, a data product and uh, get it ready for intercomparisons. And finally, uh, from that uh, legacy, you can start looking at a specific event or looking at, at a specific feature by selecting uh, an algorithm delivered as a service on, on JEP, start the on-demand process your area of interest and time series of interest, and perform cross analysis, and finally uh, share the results. So on the key features, uh, you understand there is a new data catalog uh, integrated, providing integrated search of uh, your data mission records. There, there are uh, EO data cloud processing services, which are algorithms delivered uh, online. And we have mapping and geospatial information tools. So I'm now going to provide more information on the new time series viewer on JEP, which is compatible with the Copernicus CGMS products. So this viewer is basically uh, operating on top of a, a result data set, whether it is the output of a long time series processing service or a um, Defined uh, data sets stored on the cloud and connected to JEP. Of course, those data sets are compatible with the APIs that are operating for this uh, rendering on the time series viewer. So you have basically on the map a number of uh, interactive points that you can act upon by filtering or uh, selecting. Uh, you can zoom in and zoom out very quickly. Uh, Federico, can you still hear me? Yes, because I, I saw the mouth doing yes, yes. hand wheel. <laughs> I was yes, yes. a bit scared for a second. All good. And you have the layer styling where you will um, uh, act on, on the data. Uh, you see here uh, all the view options uh, for selecting a variable, the velocity, uh, selecting the point radius that you want to see, defining the color schema, and then more advanced features that will allow you to uh, select a point and obtain a plot, define an area and obtain statistical information for this area, or define a transect and uh, obtain a data profile uh, for, uh, for this feature. So this is an example of a uh, plotting. Uh, this one is uh, calculated uh, on top of the result of uh, one of the JEP processing services, snapping, which is a PSI uh, permanent scatter interferometry uh, technique, uh, implementing this technique. And you see typically uh, around January 2021, uh, the evidence of, uh, of an event. 
which is, which is uh, reflected by uh, the, the time series processing output as a typical subsidence for the, for the area. On the portal, you will see three now, uh, as, uh, as the new uh, features, you will see three uh, large datasets uh, curated on JEP along uh, the over time uh, recently, thanks to different projects and uh, corporations. So you have a country scale uh, product uh, for uh, time series visualization over Greece. This was fully computed by the snapping uh, service um, provider, uh, the OS uh, in Thessaloniki University of OS. Um, and this is computed uh, on JEP uh, based on uh, the Sentinel-1 descending orbit for Greece over uh, um, over time, it's a long time series. This is complemented uh, now by the Copernicus EGMS um, uh, vertical uh, motion project uh, version 3 and available for Europe over the years 2018 to 2022. And um, so yes, EGMS ortho vertical. And a uh, third uh, product, which is the local scale of the Alps, and which is part of uh, the result of a collaboration with the Digital Twin for Alps initiative, sponsored by the European, European Space Agency. Um, so you see different collaboration context here within uh, a Digital Twin project with partners um, uh, Synergize and others sp sponsored by Lisa. Here for EGMS, this is uh, also a partnership uh, initiated by uh, the European Space Agency with the Copernicus uh, to uh, allow this agreement that will per permit to JEP users to directly work on, on this data on JEP and uh, on, the, on the Greece country level uh, uh, scale this is a, a partnership with the service provider uh, which was uh, it was sponsored uh, for for doing this work so uh, with the features uh, we have uh, the following uh, goals are addressed and the following is provided for uh, this time series uh, viewer of our egms products we have persistent access to free and open data from Copernicus EGMS. The products are offered free of charge, and this is reflecting commitment uh, of JEP and Teradway to open science. The analysis of GeoZart products from different sources using EGMS products uh, alongside with other products, analysts can perform intercomparisons, technical validation, or they can apply post-processing tools. And this is enabling downstream applications. Gen, uh, JEP aims to uh, support the user community by enhancing the usability of these EGMS products uh, with a suite of complementary data processing services that I have presented as part of the offer and analytical tools directly hosted on JEP. So this is an example of a time series plotting. Uh, this is using a transect in the area uh, around uh, Tirnavos in Greece. And uh, you see the pop-up windows which are reflecting the user interaction on the screen uh, here, defining a transect and getting uh, the visualization. And finally, uh, accessing those products through JEP provides several key features implemented by the time series viewer. So we have dynamic visualization. Uh, users can access average velocity of ground movements in a very dynamic fashion on the map. They are enhancing, this is enhancing the understanding of spatial topological patterns for them. They can um, uh, also request uh, the measurement points to be automatically clustered in space according to their visualization scale. We have customizable uh, data representation through layer selection. We have also lookup tables and color scale adjustments. Advanced data filtering, the data sets uh, allows for filtering points according to velocity thresholds, uh, facilitating the, the focused analysis on, on some areas of interest. 
We also have on the fly uh, visualization where users can interact to plot uh, a displacement for a specific point, uh, visualizing the, the full uh, movement over time, generate statistics for areas of interest, and visualize along geographic transects. And finally, there is also a capacity of export data. Uh, users can export the time series. Um, they can do so uh, in CSV format for their uh, area of interest, not necessarily the full times. But also, they have the choice to download in coverage uh, JSON format. And nevertheless, there is still the, the capability also to download the original times. So if you want to read more, uh, there are two uh, recent articles uh, on the on the portal, and you will find them uh, here in the stakeholders area, Copernicus EGMS, where you have a lot of details uh, out of what I have just uh, presented. And we have also a blog post which is uh, dedicated to this uh, topic. So here from the home page. You have the most recent uh, blog post here, uh, which is access, accessible via this link, where you have also more information, especially uh, how to get access. Yes? So, sorry, Hervé. Uh, there is a question in the chat that maybe you can take now. Sarah is asking, what is uh, CovJSON format? So coverage JSON is, uh, is an encoding. Uh, related to um, web compatible uh, format, uh, which is uh, JSON uh, based on uh, JavaScript uh, technology. And so it's simply, uh, let's say, one of the most recent uh, encoding that uh, web developers are uh, really uh, fond of uh, to, to use in their applications. Functionality will be equivalent to what you get with a CSV, so you get uh, tabular data in your file and uh, so an array of values for each uh, property of the of the data. So to to progress towards the use cases uh, also an information that on the portal under the flyers uh, URL you will find uh, presentations, commercial presentations of uh, some of our flagship services. So <clears throat> I present two services which were involved in the um, uh, digital uh, twin for Alps uh, in the generation of uh, time series data for uh, this uh, region. So there is <clears throat> the ground deformation monitoring with optical image time series for landslide analysis service. GDM, OPT slide from the University of Strasbourg, where you provide uh, a time series of optical data, typically Sentinel-2, and you will get uh, displacement measurement points. Uh, the algorithm uh, relies on two main uh, technologies. There is the MICMAC, which are uh, both, and the GeoFolky, which are both uh, documented uh, research papers uh, for, the, for the technique involved. In this uh, flyer, you will then uh, have a quick uh, summary on how to use how to use the service, so you understand what it takes uh, to use such a service on uh, on JEP, the main steps in uh, preparing the data and uh, running the service, and uh, some generic information on the techniques uh, implemented by by the service. You have also an information about the cost, and I will give uh, a little bit more uh, details about the cost later, but also at the end of the session, Federico will present to you the NOR sponsorship program, which will fund these uh, costs for, for a user project. And there is the snapping uh, service for uh, persistent scatterers techniques, where you, um, uh, again, find the, the main uh, steps uh, involved. Here we have three stages. First, we are running, the user will run a data preparation uh, step, which is uh, intended to 
assemble the interferometry stack to be processed. Then there is an automatic stage two where all this uh, assembly of uh, interferometric stack data is processed to generate interferograms. And uh, when ready, uh, you get uh, uh, what we call a processing stack, interferometry stack, ready to give as input to the third step, which is very fast uh, in this way, where you give it to, uh, you give it as, in, as input and it will uh, start the processing of uh, persistent scatterers and uh, ground motion points. Okay. Sorry. Uh, and of course we conclude with the uh, technique involved and uh, the costs. So here you see, for example, on the cost, we, we have uh, something which is five euro per input Sentinel-1 input product to be processed. So typically for 100 uh, inputs, uh, 100 dates, uh, unique dates uh, provided to the service, the cost is uh, 500 euros. And uh, then you will uh, wait for the completion of the preparation of the interferometric stack and finally get the access to the PSI computing with the MED resolution. The price is for that stack of 100 inputs, 900 euros. And we also have a full resolution version, which uh, price is uh, the double, double or 1,800 for 100 dates. So I, I was talking uh, about um, processing service providers. They are partners on the uh, The Hadway provides to them uh, the tooling, which is elite for their, uh, for their integration of their processing services. And there is a program, including you can uh, benefit from North sponsorship if you're interested to uh, become visible on JEP with your uh, own algorithm or simply share that uh, work with your own user community. That's another possibility. You can contact us and, and work on, uh, on this uh, uh, ELIP uh, solution to integrate your algorithm and deliver it as a service object. Looking at the time, uh, we are all good, a little bit uh, behind schedule, so I will try to move faster. So a few use cases to be presented now. So we have open, typically on JEP, we have typically open science use cases. Uh, I take here the example of the, another initiative uh, quite connected to the digital, digital twin for Alps, which is the EO for Alps landslides initiative, also sponsored by ESA where uh, products are uh, available on JEP and uh, where you uh, access a processing service result. Here we see uh, some uh, squeezer processor uh, velocity map uh, result on the map. By clicking on the product on the map, this will open on the um, data services uh, panel the, the details about this service and uh, there is a button where you can also access when it was referenced by the service provider of course um, open science uh, publication related to this work so we are connecting uh, data results to scientific paper as, as much as possible on on jep you can also of course download uh, these these products and uh, so you have the processing service parameters at hand, you have uh, the product outputs at hand, and you have the scientific paper at hand to purchase your own research goals when you, you are uh, doing some, uh, some research on the same area and you want to build on top of uh, other work. Now about uh, science support, you can follow us on YouTube. Uh, there are uh, videos. Um, currently, uh, we had three sessions uh, conducted with our partners uh, from the scientific animation team on JEP and uh, invited scientific uh, speakers. 
And over time, we have uh, delivered a session on monitoring wide area subsidence from space with a talk from uh, Dr. Fran Florian Provo and uh, from Dr. Francesca Signa. Uh, so that's for uh, subsidence. For each uh, session in the webinar, recorded webinar, you will see also an introduction to uh, Earth observation concepts and techniques. The second one was dedicated to the monitoring of infrastructures with a talk from Dr. Michael Fumelis and Dr. Sayam Nashrula. AIT in Asia was a JEP partner typically sponsored by the Asian Development Bank. Besides ESA, we, we, they are our most prominent sponsor to date. So there are a few, and you will find a lot of results uh, in this webinar commented by uh, Dr. Uh, Nashrula. And uh, third one on the monitoring of landslides, also always using JEP services, of course. Again, uh, an introduction to uh, INSA and optical principles by Dr. Florian Provo. Then uh, a presentation by Dr. Thierry Opikofer. From Terranum, they are a partner of the EU for Alps uh, landslides uh, initiative uh, conducting on, on JEP, and uh, a presentation by Dr. Deodato Tatete, along with uh, Francesca Signa. And again, a lot of results uh, commented uh, on this uh, webinar. Finally, to conclude, I have 10 minutes left. Yes, we are perfectly on time now. Uh, the list of resources to help you start as a user. So first of all, when you join uh, our portal, geoazards-tep.eu, you have uh, the possibility to register an account, and by doing so, you will, by default, become a visitor user on JEP, already having access to a lot of uh, data and information on JEP. Uh, in case you are interested to uh, run processing, you can email us. There is a generic uh, contact email address, contact at geohazards-tep.eu, and ask your question, and we will most likely redirect you to the uh, way to subscribe, uh, to um, request a sponsorship from uh, the Network of Resources uh, ESA initiative. There is online documentation. Uh, accessible from the portal and I've mentioned the tutorials and you see this is quite comprehensive. We have not only all the processing services part of the public offer but also the documentation of all the um, processors that have been integrated for other purposes than uh, becoming part of a commercial offer and which means they have been integrated for the specific purposes of a project typically. And they are available here and visible here in case of uh, opportunities to uh, bootstrap this work to a more uh, wider audience. There is a blog uh, very frequently updated uh, with a good number of contributors. So it's really a community resource. And especially we are very happy each time a user, a job user, is contributing an article uh, discussing the results of uh, their work on JEP. So that's for the JEP blog. And we are also uh, creating a larger number of uh, sections on this uh, discuss, discuss.com portal to address uh, specific topics related to JEP. You can ask the operations support team for technical help. So we have a support site, helpdesk.teradway.com. So this is for our subscribers. And uh, there you can uh, request support in case of uh, an issue with the JEP portal or in case of an issue with uh, a processing job. We will, uh, with the support team, we will uh, deliver hands-on guidance for you and direct support in case of issues with processing job results. You can also um, contact the operation support team directly from uh, the JEP portal. So when, uh, when you run a job and you see uh, a failed status for the job, uh, you can click a button. This will open this form on the left hand side, uh, pre-generated -pre form that you can 
uh, edit and uh, and submit to us this will create a ticket that you can see here on the on the help desk interface and finally you can ask uh, the platform team so we have the operation support and we have the platform team for business operations and that's the email address i was mentioning contact at geozards-step.eu and this platform team uh, is advising you on selecting a processing service from the portfolio, budgeting uh, the processing costs for your study area, and uh, recommending you to uh, towards NOR whenever it's uh, applicable, or discussing with you uh, the conditions for a, a direct subscription. Um, when you are subscribed, uh, you will still interact with this platform team uh, on JEP. Uh, so because you have a dedicated uh, uh, space under your user profile page to monitor your data processing activities, there is a usage tab uh, that will track your daily usage uh, or your input products processed per, services, per service. And you can monitor your overall subscription uh, the status of your consumption when you have a budget like NOR will deliver to you uh, 5,000 euros for a project and uh, you can monitor the progress here of the consumption of this budget. Um, so this is one example of a guidance. So you want to perform a long time series processing. Uh, this is the most expensive category on JEP. You get figures like for uh, this bass technique uh, for uh, multi-temporal analysis, uh, keeping the example of 100 input products, uh, the cost will be uh, 7.5 euros per product. So a total cost for that job of uh, 750 euros. And for snapping, which has three steps and uh, two uh, manual steps for the user and the set, step two in the middle being uh, automatic. It's 500 euros for uh, the generation of interferograms uh, when you have provided uh, the 100 unique acquisition dates as, as input and uh, 900 euros for medium resolution results uh, for the PSI step. So yeah, uh, as a general rule, the cost is determined by the number of processing job inputs. There are variations and you can see all the detail uh, from the web store page that I have introduced at the beginning. Uh, there is a PDF that you can open uh, from that page that provides the full list uh, and conditions for, uh, for the, the processing services, uh, the, the full price list. So I may have been a bit too fast because we have 20 minutes left. So hopefully we have uh, a number of questions um, for the echo, but there is also your, your own uh, presentation about NOR. So I'm looking forward to the questions after that. Yes. Thank, thank you, Hervé. We have uh, a question. Uh, if you can, please repeat the Nile Delta uh, use case from Sara, so I don't know if you want to take it again. Uh, so the Nile use case, I'm not sure to understand the, the, the question. In, in Sarah, the section, in the section of use please. cases, you mean, yes? Yeah. Well, okay, so I'm not going to uh, redo the presentation of, uh, of the use case of, our, of the, the Nile area, but you, you can go to, um, but anyway, from the recording, and I suppose, uh, Federico, from the conclusion of this session, you will send yes. slides. So the URL is on YouTube, and you go to videos by Teradue to find uh, this presentation. I hope yes. I also, uh, please consider that if you have, <laughs> thank you, uh, also uh, to all the attendees, consider that if you have any questions, you can always uh, uh, send us an email later on. Uh, you can reach out to Hervé or uh, directly to us through the NOR uh, email address that you should have. 
uh, I think you received an email yesterday uh, from the NOR email address with the reminder of the session. So um, if you have any question at any point related to uh, what we are discussing, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, reach out uh, via email. Yeah, so the nice use case is from the session monitoring infrastructures from space. And you will find this uh, video here on YouTube by going to videos by Teradue. That's the session two infrastructures. Thank you, Hervé. Okay, so um, I will start the presentation on the NOR portal. And uh, if uh, um, you have other questions, please uh, uh, write them in the chat. Uh, and after the presentation on the NOR portal, we can address them. So I'm going to share the screen. Okay. So um, how to reach out the uh, NOR uh, um, services? Uh, you, you need to go, first of all, to the NOR portal. And to do so, uh, you can use the web address nor-discover.org. You will be then redirected to the uh, Network Resources uh, portal, where uh, you have uh, any useful information about what the network of resources is and all the different uh, services that are available to the NOR. By uh, scrolling down on the uh, home page, you already have some information about this initiative. Uh, for instance, you have the number of approved projects, the number of providers onboarded, uh, and the services that are available to the NOR, and uh, many other information. You can also go to different sections, uh, like uh, news section, where you have news about uh, uh, the latest providers onboarded or latest activities on the network of resources. You can also go to the outreach page, and here you will find the recording also of this session uh, when they will be available to the public. You have also uh, past sessions of the uh, NOR webinar series. And then by going to the portfolio page, you can go directly to the portfolio of the different services by clicking access it here. You will then uh, be redirected to a new uh, web page where you have all the different providers and services. You can search what you're looking for with a text search or apply some filters, or you can just scroll down the, uh, the list of the different providers here. Let's say uh, we want to look for uh, the uh, Geohazard tap. So we find the Geohazard tap by Terra2. And here we have uh, uh, some informations, like, for instance, uh, details on the services, uh, the collections available through the Geohazard tap, and also the provider help desk link. This is really important because we always advise you to contact first the provider before applying for specific services, because uh, you need to understand if the services that you are requesting through the network of resources are helpful for your project. Then, by going to the pressing wizard, uh, you can uh, ask for specific services. You need, first of all, to select the project type you're working on, uh, if you're working on commercial, research, pre-commercial, or educational projects, we want to remind you that only research, pre-commercial, and educational projects are eligible for ESA funding. So let's say we are working on a research project, and then uh, we can select the uh, services that we want to ask. Uh, for instance, we click this tick box to select this service, and we can also change the number of units and the duration in, uh, of the service. Then, by going down, you will have an overview of the cost you are, uh, of the services you are requesting, and two different options. The first one is, that, is to go directly to the provider website and ask the provider for these specific services. Otherwise, you can uh, ask ESA for sponsorship and apply for uh, a sponsorship. Uh, by uh, selecting, first of all, if you work uh, on an ESA project or not. 
uh, if you are working on an ESA project, uh, uh, you need also to later to uh, state uh, the ESA contact number and the ESA technical officer. Let's say we are not working on an ESA project. And if you will or want, co-found the cost. We want to remind you that uh, some of the eligibility criteria are related to the maximum cost that is uh, sponsored, that can be sponsored by ESA, which is uh, 5,000 euros. So uh, anything that goes above this amount uh, or also anything that requests uh, um, more um, many, let's say, um, commercial data uh, need to be co-founded. Uh, so let's say in this case, we will not co-found the cost, we select no, and then we ask ESA for sponsorship. This will redirect you to um, a new uh, web page where you need to uh, state out the project title, the name of the project coordinator, so in theory your name, the uh, project coordinator work category, the official email address, this is really important, it must be the organization email address. We cannot accept personal email addresses like Gmail uh, and so on. So here we, need, uh, we want to see an official email address, the project organization name, country, web page, and address. Then uh, you need to write uh, the project objectives. So which are the goals of your project and the implementation methodology you are going to apply for reach these goals and expected results. Finally, uh, there are uh, some sessions, some sections uh, related to uh, the justification for selected services and provider. And this is why we ask you to contact first the provider at desk, because we want to see here uh, why you decided to ask for these specific services and how these services uh, can be uh, helpful for your project. The description of work within the cloud environment, really important the uh, not network of resources is an ESA initiative aiming to bring user to data and not the contrary. So it's not uh, a way to access data for that there are other ESA uh, sponsorship schemes. Uh, in this case, uh, you need to work uh, inside the cloud environment of the provider. So we want to see uh, how you will work uh, uh, inside this environment and Finally, the geographical area of interest of the project. For instance, if you are working uh, uh, over some city, cities, regions, and so on. Then, uh, if it's not the first time you have applied for an or sponsorship, here you need to select no, and then you need to write here the previous request ID that was assigned to your uh, previous uh, sponsorship request. Uh, you need to confirm that, that you have fulfilled all the duties. For instance, we will see uh, it in a bit like the uh, submission of the set of slides. Then if you are working on an ESA project, you need to uh, state here the ESA contract number and the ESA technical officer. And finally, you have an overview of all the different services, uh, units duration and cost that you are requesting to the NOR. Uh, last thing that you need to do is to uh, say what is the expected date of submission of the set of slides in the order of a month and year. And uh, uh, we want to remind you that this is mandatory. It's uh, a, a report that you need to send at the end of the project. It's done in PowerPoint or any PowerPoint-like software. Uh, it's uh, four to five slides and you need to write here why and how the services you requested through the NOR were helpful for your project. We don't need to see the final results of the project if you reach your goal or not. Uh, we want to see why and how the resources were helpful because this is uh, what we ask you. So uh, how you use the resources you uh, ask to the network of resources. Then, you can or cannot sign up for the NOR newsletter, and you must accept the ESA privacy policy. The last thing that you need to do is to export the sponsoring request. Uh, it will create a PDF. You need to download the PDF file, sign it, and if you're working on an ESA project, you need also the signature of the ESA technical officer. 
once you have the file uh, signed, you need to email it to nor-sponsorship-request.tisa.int. This will trigger the evaluation process that usually takes around six working days, but it might take longer if we need more information from your side. But in that case, you will be contacted. So uh, this ends the part on the NOR portal. I don't see any other questions in the chat. So in this case, uh, I want to repeat again uh, that this session will be available uh, through the uh, outreach page of the NOR portal, um, that if you have any questions, you can email uh, us uh, or Hervé directly. And uh, also that at the end of this uh, session, uh, it will appear automatically a uh, feedback uh, uh, page, web page, where you need to, uh, where you can, sorry, <laughs> fill out the, the sponsorship, the, sorry, the feedback uh, for the session. Um, so that's it from my side. I want to thank Hervé again and all the participants for, uh, uh, for being with us today. And I wish you uh, a good afternoon and a good rest of the week. Thank you very much. Goodbye.